this uh, project uh, from Civic Bra, uh, Indo France project on commercial production of uh, carotenoids by microalgae towards new biotech process. And in this work, we are in collaboration with the uh, University of Mans, uh, France, along with Professor Ben Mushafois. Uh, in this project, we are actually targeting two microalgae. Uh, one is Hematococcus fluvialis, and another is Diatom pheodictalin triconatum. The main purpose of this project is to uh, harvest the pigments, mainly astaxanthin and fucoxanthin, because the cost, the market cost of both these uh, pigments is quite high, about 3.4 billion US dollar per uh, kg, and it is increasing because uh, this astaxanthin, it is uh, uh, king of ketocarotenoids, uh, very high antioxidant, uh, and since the outbreak of uh, COVID, everybody is looking for alternate drugs uh, for the treatment of, you know, against anti-inflammation responses, against uh, something which can uh, increase the cytokine strong. Uh, so this hematococcus is uh, something like this when it undergoes stress period. So if you see, this is the actual size of the green cell and when it undergoes stress, it increases in size like this. And this red pigment is the astaxanthin. Uh, this astaxanthin is a bioastaxanthin and that's why it's... Uh, cost is quite high because uh, this thick cell wall of the hematococcus, it is not very easy to break. We have tried many ways like pulse electric field, ultrasonication, the ball does not go anywhere. The same problem is with the diatom, they are rich in silica wall. So we are dealing with two microalgae which are uh, of high potential but their walls are quite rigid and that is a reason uh, that we want to harvest and not actually you know lies or kill the cells because extraction <coughs> increases the cost of production but harvesting it is just like milking the you know products it's just like you don't kill the cow uh, for milking every morning you uh, harvest the milk so that is the actual uh, thing uh, protocol we are designing so that we can milk the pigments from these uh, potential macroalgae so if you see these are some uh, small scale uh, uh, jars which we have used for uh, stressing the hematococcus in which we have increased the intensity of the light so that the hematococcus undergoes the stress period. Uh, there are several ways we have tried so as to bring its economic uh, cost of production low like for example beside these jars which we are commonly using in our you know, homes we are using these discarded uh, bubble wraps which are which we normally get when we get some instrument so we get this bubble wrap or some parcel at home we get this bubble wrap so it was like we tested uh, three four types of bubble wrap like the low density polypropylene the high density polypropylene the normal plastic and finally we found that low density polypropylene it allows the exchange of the gases without uh, letting the you know uh, the water content of it to dry. So this was work was published uh, in uh, Stoughton. So we have uh, inoculated our hematococcus in these small bubble wraps, and then we have in the normal bubble wraps. And uh, you can see we have given different light. Different light uh, it gives a stress treatment for the uh, hematococcus, uh, and it uh, in the red light it blooms. It increases its biomass, and in blue and it uh, blue light, it increases the astaxanthin content. So uh, this was like our lab, completely covered with microalgae, but actually we are uh, doing in vitro work. We are culturing them in the, uh, the tissue culture room. So you can see this is a complete uh, uh, inoculation unit we have where we are doing the in vitro work. Inoculating the uh, cultures of the microalgae, uh, hematococcus, as well as the diatoms. And uh, this is our very small uh, culture room, as you can see. So, where we are having the diatoms, we are having the microalgae, hematococcus. As you can see, that it is now slowly turning to orange because why because we are giving it stress so this is the beta carotene right the next step after beta carotene is that it will turn red into astaxanthin because we are giving it a different level of stress 
as you can see over here uh, this is a red light intensity which we are giving to increase the biomass of the cell over here if you see we are giving the blue light intensity the blue light intensity it increases the pigment concentration especially the estrogenic concentration so these are the different setups we have uh, applied and we have also given them different chemical stress because uh, not only the light stress but the chemical stress it will change the pathway and it will you know, beta carotene gets converted into estrogen which is a commercial product so as you can see we are giving light stress uh, this is uh, about 20 liter flask where we are giving the different light stress like blue and the combination of the blue and red also works for increasing the biomass as well as the pigment besides that you can see this is a small device it, it is actually a upscaling device of what we made it on a 2 inch wafer at IIT Bombay. So this is a resonating device which for which we have filed the patent which takes the diatoms or the microalga and these are the pillars which are giving a mechanical shear strain on the cell wall of the microalga and letting them ooze their content or harvest their uh, value added products. So uh, besides uh, doing uh, the light stress and the chemical stress, as you can see, we have made different chambers for the uh, high intensity blue light, uh, red light, as well as the we have the green light uh, set up over here. So besides that, and obviously the white light also has to be there uh, for as a control, right? So besides that, you see that we are also giving it a flashlight, a combination of flashlight. So this is a small experiment which is going on in which we are giving a flashlight. So there's a blinking, uh, blinking on and off of the blue and the red lights in this particular setup. And uh, this is really interesting as we are uh, getting very good results regarding both their biomass increase as well as their pigments. And not only this, Besides uh, this, we are also making some commercial products of great use uh, of personal care products and uh, also some novel drugs we are on to preparation for which we are uh, progressing towards filing the patent. So, as I said, we are uh, designing new methods to harvest the you know, astoxanthin and pigments uh, from these microalgae of potential interest. So there is uh, one, uh, another method which we designed and it is on 2 inch silicon wafer and basically it's a microfluidic device which we have designed and that project is sanctioned uh, by uh, INUP, IIT Bombay, that is a nano fabrication center we, where we would be designing a small photobioreactor on, a, on the 2 inch wafer, basically it's a lab on chip device. So this project is recently uh, sanctioned a week before which was one of the objective of our Cifipra Indo France project where we would be designing a lab on chip device. Uh, earlier also we designed a lab on chip device on a silicon vapor but that was based on the resonance energy and uh, this time we were we are using the high pressure uh, to harvest the pigments from the hematococcus. So another way of uh, um, harvesting the astrozanthin from the microalga which can be very economical is via this uh, microbial fuel cell. As we know that microbial fuel cell it basically employs microbes at the anode and uh, there has to be oxidation reduction reaction at the anode and the cathode for the generation of the electric current where we are using the microbes at the anode uh, which is obviously in wastewater. So here what we are doing we are making the uh, photosynthetic uh, algal microbial fuel cell. So here what we are doing we are using the wastewater we are using the wastewater at the anode uh, which is rich in anaerobic bacteria and at the cathode we are using the hematococcus pluvialis and uh, this is separated by a uh, proton exchange membrane which we are using over here the clayware membrane and this process not only generates the electric current can you sh uh, show please this not only generates the electric current in like here you can see the yeah. potential be being generated over here but with time it has been seen that the hematococcus increases in biomass and it uh, it is rich in the lipid and it is rich in the astrozanthin due to the stress environment it is getting uh, getting uh, from the environment which we are giving it to it like as you can see we are giving it a high light environment high intensity light environment we are giving uh, in our earlier experiment what we did uh, we replaced the uh, 
microbes at the anode with the diatoms. So anything at the anode has to be electrogenic. So we proved that diatoms are electrogenic because of the NOx ions generated in their uh, metabolic cycle. So at the anode, the diatoms were used and a dye was used at the cathode. So it can be a very good way of generating electricity and as well as recovering the value added products. But another thing which we have in our mind probably is that a small amount of electric current which is generated can be used as an electrocution method for electrocuting the uh, rigid polysaccharide cell wall of the hematococcus as well as the silica wall of the diatom for harvesting the uh, pigments and the oil from them. Because PEF, the pulse electric field method has failed for hematococcus. It completely lyses uh, the cell. So this was tested by us on diatoms in which the paper was published in Bioresource Technology also, in which we had tested uh, three different ways of harvesting, like we used the PEF, we used uh, centrifugation, we used the resonance energy, the lab on chip device, which we made at uh, IIT Bombay, Nanofabrication Center, INUP, as well as NCPRE. Uh, so we found that resonance energy was good enough for the harvesting the biofuels from the diatom. So in this case of hematococcus, now we are uh, using the high pressure device uh, for harvesting the astaxanthin. So that work is in progress. So this is an economical way. Another economical way is that we can, uh, we can uh, uh, harvest or cultivate our alga uh, in the wastewater itself because wastewater is rich in uh, nutrients, nitrogen, phosphate and uh, other trace metals. So here you can see how economically we, ha we, are, we are growing the hematococcus in the bubble wrap. So our whole lab you can see we have designed some uh, you know, uh, modules like this is a small chandelier and where you can just uh, pump in the carbon dioxide via this uh, filter. So this is a chandelier. Uh, this, these are the, we, we say them as the oxygen curtains. So our whole lab, it is completely covered by alga, which is giving us the oxygen to breathe in. Something little humorous to talk about. Thank you. So, hello, welcome again uh, to our small uh, algal lab. Uh, the lab is small, but uh, if you see every nick and corner of this lab, some work is going on. And uh, as I was telling you regarding some products which we are preparing from these pigments. Uh, Ishwarya, can you show me some products which you have prepared? Yes, so this is the uh, lip balm which the students have prepared. This is the uh, cucumber rose Astra gel, which they have prepared. This is a natural color. There's no addition of any external color. This is the face pack the students have prepared. This is a serum for eyes. Very good for skin since it is rich in antioxidants. This is again a herbal face pack. And this is a clay face pack. And this is a face gel what they have prepared. Besides these personal care products, we have made uh, Astra tea. Now this is this would be a, you know just dip in tea which would be rich in astaxanthin. So what in just imagining that a dip of Astra every morning will be storming our cytokines, it would be uh, making us immune strong and definitely a fight for uh, diseases like uh, COVID or any viral disease or any uh, such disease for which uh, it is fighting or it is making our immune system stronger. So well, uh, this is another uh, basic experiment. Uh, seems to be basic, but uh, actually this is towards uh, one of the biggest dream of, I must say, Elon Musk, uh, towards terraforming Mars towards uh, Earth. And that is in this small chamber, or rather it's a desiccator you can see, we are simulating the atmosphere for Mars uh, by maintaining the pressure uh, using the vacuum pump and we are uh, giving it uh, that much carbon dioxide and we will be maintaining at it in uh, you know, that much temperature so as, to, so as to simulate the environment for Mars and uh, in a way 
we want to grow the cultures of the diatom as well as hematococcus and we want to see how they you know survive uh, since both of them they are very robust uh, microalga and uh, they are supposed to live in a high co2 so that is a small experiment where we are simulating the microalga in uh, mars environment and if it works that can be a really help for further you know uh, experiments at a higher level probably where uh, in mars there can be culturing of the diatoms in such uh, you know uh, big balloons uh, below the lake waters and it's a, a high high profile dream i'm not saying much but yes this is a small experiment which we are doing over here so now finally i'm going to introduce to you the team members of my lab the real warriors of this lab who have been working day and night to accomplish all these experiments uh, they are dedicated students of uh, msc dissertation as well as the project staff of sitra as well as the phd students uh, allotted in this lab please uh, come hi i am ankesh uh, grf uh, in sepipra research project i am working on hematococcus pluvialis we have fabricated uh, dual chamber mfc uh, for the electrocution purposes and to generate the current i am simultaneously i am also working on some light stress and chemical stress conditions uh, to accumulate the astaxanthin inside the hematococcus cells thanks Hello, I'm Vandana, and I'm working on uh, hematococcus pluvialis, uh, providing them uh, flashlight stress. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rita, and I'm designing silver nanoscanner to harvest astaxanthin from hematococcus. Thank you. Hello, I'm Ashwarya, and I'm designing gold nanoscanner to harvest astaxanthin from hematococcus pluvialis. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rishabh, and I'm working on microbial fuel cell. using diatom in the reduction of dye hello sonali here i am working on remediation of tannery waste water using hematococcus pluvialis cells under high light stress conditions hello i am pragati i am working on mfc to remediate pharmaceutical waste water using microalga and its resources hello i am urvashi soni i am i have synthesized the silica nano particles from rice husk ash to check the enhancement in the diatomic growth thank you thank you and this is a stab plant and you see it generates the current and as well as, as, well as the potential and uh, the purpose over here is not only generation of the current but using the, this different framework of current in different mfc setups which we have used over here and check the different level of uh, currents to uh, uh, check the electrocution of hematococcus as well as diatom for harvesting their pigments astaxanthin as well as the fucoxanthin as well as the lipids from both of both these uh, microalgae Hello, I am Priyanka. I have recently joined this lab as PhD scholar, and I am currently exploring the nanobiotechnological aspects of microalgae. Thank you. Hi, I am Kumbhi, and I am also new in this lab. I am exploring biomedical aspects of astaxanthin. Thank you. Sir. from Le Mans University and um, I am uh, working in uh, a lab named BIOS for biology of organisms stress health and environment 
and I am the co-leader of a team um, who is, which is interesting by um, microalgae. This team is uh, called um, Metabolism, Molecular Engineering of Microalgae and Applications. Because the title of the team is uh, indicating it, we have two major uh, axes. First one, which is uh, metabolism and uh, molecular engineering of microalgae. This is a basic uh, research that aims to <coughs> understand how microalga are uh, changing the orientation of their uh, metabolism and especially the carbon metabolism toward the production of uh, interesting compounds under stress. Why to have chosen this uh, topic? Because most uh, of the interesting compounds for industries are made of carbon. that um, is used to make different um, uh, different measure of physiological measure like uh, FV, FM. You have to fill it up several times. Right? Yeah, it will have to. Then you see it's just cooling down. The heat system is not that perfect. First of all, good morning from Limo as well as good morning from India. So I'm Dr. Vandana Vinayak and uh, I have come over here. Uh, for a scientific meet as well as a talk and today I'm going to uh, throw some light on the valorization of microalga towards circular bioeconomy, a nanobiotic approach and this work is in association uh, with the DNM lab and the MIMA uh, here at Limo under the CIFIPRA Indo-French project. So uh, in this project uh, we, uh, Professor Benoit uh, from France is the PI and from India uh, I'm the PI. Obviously we have Dr. Justin Marchand as a co-PI. For the valorization uh, like from the microalga it is very essential like what uh, which type of microalga which should be selected obviously for the biofuels, carotenoids, the pigments, uh, the polyhydroxyalkanoids, polyunsaturated fatty acids and uh, to remediate simultaneously the wastewater, I mean, growing the microalga uh, from the wastewater, uh, consuming the nutrients present in the wastewater. So uh, the microalga of our interest are specifically the diatoms and the hematococcus pluvialis. Uh, well, both the diatoms and the hematococcus, they are rich sources of these uh, value-added products you know, diatoms, they are the major source of crude oil and their uh, geologists have claimed that almost 30% of the oil, it comes from the diatoms. They are responsible for carbon dioxide fixation, about 25%. They are rich source of uh, DHA and pigments, uh, which have antioxidant properties, mainly the fucosanthin. And 
the second microalga of our interest is the hematococcus pluvialis, which we know is producing astaxanthin, which is the king of ketocarotenoids, which is having high antioxidant properties, inflammation, anti-inflammation properties, and various other properties which would be necessary uh, to get rid of many diseases. But the common problem in both these microalga is their thick, rigid cell wall, whether it's a diatom or whether it's a hematococcus. The diatom wall is made up of silica and the hematococcus, it is made up of polysaccharides. And uh, the reason why the products from these two microalga, they are uh, the cost of these products, whether it's a biofuel or the pigments is high because the cost of production of these value added products becomes very high. Uh, when we are using, when we are cultivating them in the photobioreactors. So the cost of photobioreactors is quite high and we are using the media, which again is a high uh, cost and we are always feeding the new uh, nutrient medias. So overall, the cost of production becomes high, hence the cost of these pigments and the biofuel becomes high. So we need to find out the way by which we can uh, obviously harvest and not extract these uh, value-added uh, metabolites. The freedity of water is just zero in this case? Yes. So, how do you manage so uh, it, uh, uh, yeah, I thought about this also. So it can be jellified, something like this. Uh -huh. We can plan for that, okay. not uh, the flowing water. Okay. Okay. Hydrogels kind. Okay. Long live India and France friendship.